Okay, it's so great that we're having this special time today. And I wanna welcome Paul Hellyer, a, the former, min, former defense minister from Canada, uh, 1963 to 1967, is that correct? That is correct, yes, until actually, uh, you know, it was late 67. So, you know, the, the reason why I'm so excited, obviously we're gonna give you the Harmony Power Award right towards the end, but I wanted to, you know, to talk about what's so important with all that's been going on in the world. It's come to my realization from having the first mandated anti-bullying program in US history in a major city of Elizabeth, Elizabeth New Jersey, you know, recognizing children's positive behavior in high volume through the Harmony Power Awards has been a profound way of shifting youth culture in a positive direction. But what I learned from traveling the United States, I've learned that when kids bully, they attack human differences, race, color, creed, sexual orientation. Uh, that's the reality. That's always been since the beginning of you know, human civilization, right? And it's always, for me, I mean, me being a, an Air Force veteran, um, I, I do own Harmony by Karate, that's where we are right now, in Harmony by Karate Studios in New York City. And being chairman of the foundation, the Harmony Power Foundation, I understand the importance of the fact that we're not alone. And I've learned that as a veteran in the Air Force through discussions, you know, one particular discussion with somebody who had top secret orders, they just shrugged their shoulders. To them, it's like, yeah, like it's a given. It's not even this, it's not a big secret, even to the ones that have top secret orders. They, uh, they know that that's the norm for them. And I also understand that the big reason why uh, the disclosure, and I like to call them aliens. I think that's like the way we label people in America, that we call them aliens, like they're, no, they're, they're other light beings that we've not explored. And I think that's a more beautiful way to word them because I have no fear of connecting with these other life forms. The reason being is that the fear will hurt me more than that fear. It's like COVID, right? COVID came along this, this light being that went into people and attacked them and we, we were fearing the unknown and we didn't know anything about it, but yet we had to eventually embrace it and deal with it. And it's made our world actually evolve in a different way. And I think it's a beautiful thing overall, even with all the struggles that people have, humanity's really thinking about the, the collectiveness and the cohesiveness of working together to deal with an unseen force that's attacking us. Well, these beings, um, they, only re make, they only unseen because like you've spoken about it, they're unseen because they've not revealed themselves to us. And why they've not done that is they're concerned with, well, if they can't even get along, why are we gonna try to jump in on this? Like it makes, it's just not an intelligent thing to do. But if we can get on the same page, they have so much to offer collectively to evolve the planet. And I've heard you talk in the past about, you know, their concern with us, not only destroying ourselves, which of course, religious books talk about, everybody talks about how we destroy ourselves, but it hurts them. Like they understand that we have our ecosystems. They're part of a bigger ecosystem. They're like, well, these people can't get it right. We're in trouble. We better live amongst them, try to get, help them to figure it on their own and try to stop them from doing something that is even more colossal. So uh, reaching out to you, and I've, of course, I've, uh, I've seen your videos and, and you know, I, I'm like, you know, there's nothing for a person who ran the military to like suddenly say, hey, I believe in aliens and I'm gonna, you know, do this and do that and try to, nope, you've got nothing to prove and, every, and, and everything to lose. And that's why I felt that your integrity is so pure and so real that I'm like, this guy's the real deal. And to people who are skeptic, uh, the skeptics out there, I agree. There's a lot of lies. There's a lot of people making stuff up for attention. Mm -hmm. but, but it's kind of ludicrous to think in our minds that we're alone in this massive universe when in every year scientists discover life forms right here on the planet. They just discovered something under the iceberg. Like, come on, people. Like, really? I mean, you really think that you're alone? You're not. It, it, it's, it's much bigger than that. 
And I feel like, you know, I'd like to, to now pass this on to you to give a few, uh, a few of the reasons why I would say, people always say, what's the most important reasons to you that you know from your experiences that we're not alone? And then once you explain that, then I would like to honor you, please. Well, I have spent 15 years researching the fact that we are not alone and um, that we have a, we've never been alone. We haven't been alone from the beginning. <clears throat> and um, that most of the visitors from other planets or star systems are benign and, uh, and are friendly for, to us and want to help us, even though we sometimes turn them down when they offer to do so. <clears throat> and um, that there are only one or two um, uh, hostile species that we have to be concerned about and that we do have to be concerned about them. And uh, the pro problem is that uh, our leaders have not been telling the people the truth about the, both the advantages that could have been ad obtained if we had welcomed the, uh, the ones that wanted to help us, were ready to help us and give us the good life if we would just <clears throat> give up our atomic weapons and um, and we said no, we'd rather be second. Have our, our old people uh, suffer a lot uh, than be sensible about this, <clears throat> because you can't use atomic weapons anyway. And as soon as you start stop, uh, as soon as you forget uh, that realization, you can get in real trouble. The cosmos is a single entity. That is the reasons that. Uh, so many of the uh, visitors are, are so terribly concerned about us. They say they're like children playing with matches. We get uh, one minute to 12 on the, uh, on the atomic clock. And yet we have people talking about uh, using atomic weapons in war. And it's an absolute total insanity. And this kind of dialogue, this kind of discussion is not going on publicly. And that's because some people don't want the public to know the reality, what I call the broader reality. The broader reality that the cosmos is teeming with life of all kinds and that we're a very small speck in it, but we're important to the creator because the creator loves all of his creation uh, and uh, wants to see everyone uh, prosper and be uh, uh, content with their lives, but it hasn't turned out that way. That we have, we have um, an errant son of the Creator who has um, put together some forces who said, "Well, I think I could run the the cosmos better than the Creator Father or Mother or whatever." And uh, so we have light forces and dark forces. And uh, we have to, uh, in my opinion, start talking about it and get it out in the open and do whatever has to be done to seek the light and to, uh, to shun the dark. And it's, um, it's a big, big uh, challenge because our, our uh, communication system is so uh, uh, lopsided and we only get what the uh, people who are running the, the show uh, want us to get and they, they tell us lies <clears throat> and uh, disinformation and misinformation. I was really upset just a few days ago when NASA put its uh, rover on, the, uh, on Mars and gave the impression that they didn't know and didn't believe that there was life on Mars. And I thought to myself, this is deception. This is deliberate disinformation. It was a great feat. I admired the engineering that was involved, <clears throat> but the purpose of the thing obviously was not to enlighten people, but to keep them in the dark. And if they had been honest, they would have said, well, 
Um, there have been American forces on the uh, planet for a long while and, uh, and Russian for a while and, uh, and uh, German and uh, then the, the Martians themselves and told the truth, but they didn't because they didn't want us to be aware of the truth. Let me, uh, if I could uh, share with you my take on that and, and why, you know, why they are choosing, you know, not to collectively uh, let the world know that this has always been the truth. It's actually quite simple to me. I think the primary reason, you know, one could look at the, um, the economics of it, right? There's a business that might be going on behind the scenes, right? So I don't look at that as much because there's a lot of good people uh, in power, not just people that uh, they're not all bad. It's like there's good, bad, and everything in between, regardless of the level of society. Uh, I really do believe that religion plays a very strong role in this and that, you know, the revealing the fact that, you know, we're not alone and there's these other life beings, these other species of beings that their concern is about what they would think is the chaos. And I think they're very, uh, they're misinformed in my mind. It's, it's, a, um, it's a perception I think is incorrect. I think that we'd be, with, the time is more now than ever before to let that go and that people would, you know, because like, look, a year ago, they were like, oh, the Navy saw these uh, UFOs. Like they're, they're trying to look, put little tastes out there to give people an inkling that, that it's happening to see kind of like, well, how are people reacting? How about just tell them what it is? Like, this is what it is and that's what it is. And it's here uh, and, and kind of phase it in faster than they're doing it. They're, well, they're, that's the problem if they would get at it and, and bring in the truth a little bit. Yeah, because- yeah. The children of the future, and if they want to save the planet, and we've got to, you know, convert cars to electric, and we've got to do all these things that we're doing right now. We have to move at a much faster pace. Absolutely. And I feel that, you know, I, I applaud all those people that are. I, I think there's a lot of well-intended people hiding this and keeping it secret because they're concerned about humanity getting crazy because we can't even get along with each other, let alone another species. That's their mindset. Or what's the religion? What's the the Pope going to think, or what's the head of all these different religions? You know what? It only validates prophets, and it validates that these people did amazing things to validate their religions, and all these miracles, and these angels. These are not myths either. These are all real. All re Most major religions have a validity and a value, and will continue to have a history, and a validity, and a value to those people that follow those religions. Because they like spokes in a tire, they're all connecting to the source. Whichever way you want to connect to the source, you're still getting to the same place. And once we can unify the collectively unify that idea, we will not just coexist, but we will have the beginning of what would be more of a utopia where violence would be so infrequent and so rare and, and not even understood as to why, maybe for mental illness or things like that. But it would be the norm that we would just not just get along, but like being a ha much happier state of being um, is my belief system with that. If we would um, perhaps advertise the fact that we are all parts of the cre creator and that we are in fact siblings, uh, whether our skin is uh, white or red or black or yellow, uh, and therefore we should treat each other as brothers and sisters. And if all religions would live up to the one thing that they have in common, that is the golden rule, but which we're very hesitant to practice apparently, uh, then we could have a wonderful world. And this is what uh, I would hope and pray for, but uh, it, uh, it could come faster, I think, if we would, uh, if we would be a, a more honest as to what's going on and uh, get the truth out there so that people could absorb it a little bit at a time. Absolutely. Well, it leads me to, you know, honoring you. I said, you know, the, to me, to honor, to honor you in such a way, I don't know if this has happened, if you've been honored for this truth or honored for your efforts, but I feel that that's the greatest gift I can give back for these efforts. I do feel that all of that effort you made um, has created more awareness than you think in the world. Otherwise, you and I wouldn't even have, be having conversation. I wouldn't even know you, right? So that effort has to be recognized. And I'm, not only am I giving you the award, but I endorse you. I personally think that you're a wonderful human being and uh, the efforts are amazing. 
And, you know, I believe in everything that you're uh, saying. Do we know all of the truths to be true? No, we don't. But I know that the intention is good. I know that life exists elsewhere. And I also know that most of what you've heard has to be real. You're hearing this from government officials, military people. That's not a joke. That's the real deal. And this award here says Army Power Certificate of Award. Paul Hellier has been awarded this certificate for dedication, commitment, and outstanding efforts in promoting harmony in the world. I will be sending this to you in the mail. Beautiful. Thank with you. With pride, with great pride. And I feel that your contributions, it is helping keep this world together. And us meeting today, the world will know that we met, we'll, they'll know what we discussed. And uh, I hope that it enlightens them even more so, it helps to evolve them, as we all have a lot to learn together. So it's just, uh, like I said, it's an honor. I'm deeply uh, grateful for this time. Maybe if I could just uh, give you, before we close, my yeah. what I believe to be the uh, best line in my fourth last book, which was, I didn't know how much I didn't know because I didn't know how much there was to know. And that is as true today as when I wrote it 10 years ago. That's, that's brilliant. Well, it's like trying to know infinity. Everything uh, that we think about has an infinite value. Although we try to put our thoughts and ideas into a box, just so we can begin to understand something when it's continuous. So, you know, what you're saying is very profound. Thank you. My pleasure. And thank you very much for the honor. It's appreciated. Uh, I don't uh, work for honors, as you know, because uh, I work because uh, the creator expects me to do my best while I'm here on this earth. And uh, when he thinks I've done uh, my bit, why, uh, then I'll be happy to, uh, to move on, make room for somebody else. Just amazing. Thank you so much for today. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your interest. Yes. Bye for now. And bless your son, too. Yes. Thank you. Hope he follows in your leadership. He has. He's a wonderful young man, as my other son is too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. You too. I had that away. Stop the recording.